CSCS Test 2024 50 Questions and Answers Question 1. If you were using a circular saw at work, who has overall responsibility for making sure it's safe to use and maintained in a good working order? A. You B. Your employer or C. The council The correct answer is B. Your employer Question 2. If you were using a circular saw, which of the following would be the risk? A. The sharp saw blade B. Cutting yourself through improper use or C. The power button The correct answer is B. Cutting yourself through improper use Question 3. If you were using a circular saw, what would be the hazard? A. The sharp saw blade B. Cutting yourself through improper use or C. The power button The correct answer is A. The sharp saw blade Question 4. If you were using a circular saw, what would be the best control if it was damaged? A. Using it at half speed B. Telling your supervisor at the end of the shift or C. Not using it and reporting it to your supervisor the correct answer is C, not using it and reporting it to your supervisor. Question 5. What is the name of the main law that tells employers and workers how to maintain health and safety at work? A. The provision and use of work equipment regulations. B. The Health and Safety at Work Etc Act 1974. Or C. The Workplace Health, Safety and Welfare Regulations. The correct answer is B, the Health and Safety at Work Etc Act of 1974. Question 6. Statistically, how are you most likely to injure yourself on a construction site? A, by slipping or tripping. B, by being hit by a vehicle. Or C, by falling into an excavation. The correct answer is A, by slipping or tripping. Question 7. What causes the most fatalities on site? A. Vehicle collisions B. Being crushed or C. Falls from height The correct answer is C. Falls from height Question 8. Which of the following should apply to you when using a circular saw? A. You must be competent B. You must have completed a training course or C. You must be careful. The correct answer is A. You must be competent. Question 9. If you injured yourself whilst operating a circular saw, who would be the best person or persons to record the details of this event in an accident book? A. You and or any witnesses. B. Your supervisor. Or C. The site manager. The correct answer is A, you and or any witnesses. Question 10. What is the name of the regulation that requires an employer to report specified injuries to the health and safety executive? A, the provision and use of work equipment regulations. B, the Health and Safety at Work Etc Act of 1974. Or C, RIDOR. The correct answer is C, RIDOR or the Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulation. Question 11. If you were asked to lift a sheet of plasterboard, what is the name of the regulation that controls how this should be done safely? A. The Manual Handling Rules of 1997 B. The Lifting and Moving Safely Regulations of 1975 or C. The Manual Handling Operations Regulations of 1992 the correct answer is C, the Manual Handling Operations Regulations of 1992. Question 12. Before lifting that sheet of plasterboard, what should you do first? A. Get some gloves. B. Check the board for any sharp edges. Or C. Plan the lift. The correct answer is C. Plan the lift. Question 13. 
Which of the following is your responsibility when you lift a sheet of plasterboard at work? A. To supply your own gloves. B. The safety of others. Or C. To follow any safe systems of work and method statements. The correct answer is C. To follow any safe systems of work and method statements. Question 14. Which of the following is your employer's responsibility when you lift a sheet of plasterboard at work? A. To guarantee you are not injured. B. To minimise the risk of injury as far as reasonably practicable. Or C. To supply you with lifting straps. The correct answer is B. To minimise the risk of injury as far as reasonably practicable. Question 15. If a sheet of plasterboard was too heavy for you to lift by yourself, which might be the safer alternative? A. Lift as a team. B. Using a lifting aid like a panel trolley. Or C. Both of these. The correct answer is C. Both of these. Question 16. Why should heavy items be stored at waist height? A. They shouldn't. B. Because lifting from floor level doubles your risk of back injury. Or C. Because that makes it easier for forklift operators. The correct answer is B. Because lifting from floor level doubles your risk of back injury. Question 17. Which statement is true about lifting plasterboard? A. You can lift as much as you are able to. B. You should only lift as much as is safe to do so. Or C. You can lift up to a maximum of 20 kilograms. The correct answer is B. You should only lift as much as is safe to do so. Question 18. Which statement is correct? A. Lifting can result in a slip disc. B. Lifting can result in vertigo. Or C. Lifting can result in tinnitus. The correct answer is A. Lifting can result in a slip disc. Question 19. How should you manually handle a container with an uneven centre of gravity? A. You shouldn't lift it. B. With the heavier side closest to you. Or C. Over the shoulder. The correct answer is B. With the heavier side closest to you. Question 20. What are pump trucks, sack trolleys, genie lifts and plasterboard lifts? A. Mechanical lifting aids. B. PPE. Or C. Manual handling aids. The correct answer is C. Manual handling aids. Question 21. What regulation requires your employer to minimise the distance and consequences of a fall if one should occur? A. The Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations of 1999 B. The Work at Height Regulations of 2005 Or C. The Lifting Operations and Lifting Equipment Regulations of 1998 The correct answer is B. The Work at Height Regulations of 2005 Question 22. If you had to get tiles from ground level to roof height, what would normally be the safest way to do this? A. By using a personal conveyor belt. B. By using a gin wheel. Or C. By carrying them up scaffolding ladders. The correct answer is A. By using a personal conveyor belt. Question 23. What would your responsibilities be when working at roof height? A. To risk assess any safety equipment. B. To look after yourself. Or C. To take reasonable care of yourself and others who may be affected by your actions. The correct answer is C. To take reasonable care of yourself and others who may be affected by your actions. Question 24. When working on scaffolding, you would expect tow boards to be installed. What are these? A. A scaffold board to hang tools and materials. B. A board to help climbing the scaffolding. Or C. A small vertical barrier to prevent feet, materials and tools from falling. 
The correct answer is C, a small vertical barrier to prevent feet, materials and tools from falling. Question 25. You're about to carry out some painting at a low level using a stepladder. What should you do before starting? A. Visually inspect the ladder for damage. B. Make sure the site manager has checked the ladder. Or C. Ladders don't require checking as they are low risk. The correct answer is A. Visually inspect the ladder for damage. Question 26. You are working up a ladder and your co-worker is footing it. Is this the safest way of securing it? A. No. Wedging the ladder is the safest option. B. No. Tying off the ladder would be better. Or C. Yes, they can catch you if you fall. The correct answer is B. No. Tying off the ladder would be better. Question 27. How long should you be working from that ladder according to the Work at Height Regulations 2005? A. Until you feel tired. B. 30 minutes. Or C. As long as you need, as long as it is tied off. The correct answer is B. 30 minutes. Question 28. What would be a likely better option than a ladder if you need to use it for more than 30 minutes? A. Podium steps. B. A climbing harness. Or C. A cherry picker. The correct answer is A. Podium steps. Question 29. Before working from a scaffold tower that is close to overhead power lines, what should be done? A. You should make sure you are wearing rubber-soled boots. B. You should wear a harness. Or C. They should be made dead or switched off. The correct answer is C. They should be made dead or switched off. Question 30. How should a scaffold tower be set up? A. On concrete or tarmac only. B. On firm stable ground only. Or C. Anywhere as long as the brakes are engaged. The correct answer is B. On firm stable ground only. Question 31. If you were operating a cement mixer with a missing belt guard, what should you do? A. Wait until the end of the shift and report it to your supervisor. B. Stop using it and tell your supervisor. Or C. Try and fix it yourself. The correct answer is B. Stop using it and tell your supervisor. Question 32. Which of the following is your employer's responsibility if they require you to operate a cement mixer? A. Ensure it is maintained in efficient working order. B. Service it annually. Or C. Make sure it is earthed. The correct answer is A. Ensure it is maintained in an efficient working order. Question 33. Which of the following is your responsibility when operating a cement mixer at work? A. To risk assess before use. B. To read the instruction manual before use. Or C. Use in accordance with training and instruction provided by your employer. The correct answer is C. Use in accordance with training and instruction provided by your employer. Question 34. Which of the following is a hazard associated with the use of a cement mixer? A. Entrapment. B. Entanglement. C. Ejection. D. Contact. Or E. All of these. The correct answer is E. All of these. Question 35. If you were walking across a site where vehicles were operating, what would be the best way of preventing them colliding with you? A. Separation of vehicles and pedestrians. B. Driver CCTV. Or C. Using traffic marshals. The correct answer is A. Separation of vehicles and pedestrians. Question 36. What voltage should a tool you are using normally be run at, and what colour indicates this? A. 240 volts and blue. 
B, 220 volts and red, or C, 110 volts and yellow? The correct answer is C, 110 volts and yellow. Question 37. If your co-worker was electrocuted whilst using a cement mixer, what would you normally do first? A. Run and get help. B. Call 999. Or C. Isolate the power supply. The correct answer is C. Isolate the power supply. Question 38. If you were using a jackhammer for a prolonged period of time, what is the primary risk? A. Hand-arm vibration syndrome. B. Heavy machinery vibration syndrome. Or C. Vibrating tool syndrome. The correct answer is A. Hand-arm vibration syndrome. Question 39. When working with machinery like cement mixers and jackhammers, what describes the slight deafness you can experience that is normally restored once the noise is removed? A. Tinnitus. B. Temporary threshold shift. Or C. Acoustic trauma. The correct answer is B. Temporary threshold shift. Question 40. If using a petrol disc cutter to cut a concrete slab, what would be the most effective way for you to avoid contact with the disc? A. Keeping a safe distance from other workers. B. Wearing gloves. Or C. A fixed guard. The correct answer is C. A fixed guard. Question 41. Jackhammers can produce large amounts of dust. What is the regulation which tells us how to work safely around dust and other hazardous substances? A. The Health and Safety at Work Etc. Act of 1974. B. RIDOR. Or C. COSH. The correct answer is C. COSH. Or the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations. Question 42. What would be the best way to reduce the effects of dust whilst using the jackhammer? A. Damping down dust with water. B. Using a vacuum pump. Or C. Wearing a mask. The correct answer is A. Damping down the dust with water. Question 43. What substance contained in stone and most general site dust is considered most harmful? A. Asbestos. B. Silica or C. Silicon. The correct answer is B. Silica. Question 44. You were cleaning a paintbrush with white spirit. What group of hazardous substances does this belong to? A. Gases. B. Vapours. Or C. Solvents. The correct answer is C. Solvents. Question 45. If you contracted Viles disease, what animal would this normally come from and how would it enter the body? A. Rats through inhalation. B. Rats through ingestion, injection or absorption. Or C. Badgers through injection or absorption. The correct answer is B. Rats through ingestion, injection or absorption. Question 46. If whilst using a jackhammer you come across asbestos, what would be the correct course of action? A. Stop working immediately, warn others and report to your supervisor. B. Find a dust mask. Or C. Damp down the asbestos. The correct answer is A. Stop working immediately, warn others and report to your supervisor. Question 47. What colour is a prohibition sign? A. Yellow B. Blue Or C. Red The correct answer is C. Red Question 48. What is in a black fire extinguisher? A. Oxygen B. CO2 Or C. Dry powder The correct answer is B. CO2. Question 49. If you cut yourself using a saw at work, 
what would this be classed as? A, a near miss, B, an accident, or C, a hazard? The correct answer is B, an accident. Question 50. If you cut yourself using a saw, who should be contacted first in order to check, clean and bandage this? A, a first aider, B, a doctor, or C, the site manager? The correct answer is A, a first aider. For CSCS courses, free guidance and more tests, find us on www.healthandsafetytrainingfirst.co.uk or call us on 0330 122 6126. Thanks for watching.